because you know why? Why? Because it feels right. It feels right. Legendary. Okay. 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 Here we are. Mm-hmm. There you are. All right. This is going to be a fun episode, Adam, because we don't have we don't have we don't have much in the way of notes or preparation, and that's unusual for for us because we are usually incredibly prepared and have detailed notes and know exactly what we're going to talk about mm-hmm. step by step. So this is this will be a it feels right episode. Yeah, I mean, it's normally you know anywhere from six to eight hours of preparation that we do for each episode. I would say so. Yeah. Uh, that we're we're trimming the fat a little bit, and here we are. It's going to be a good one. Yeah, things like this don't just happen, you know, like this, you know, it's not like you can just press a button and talk into a microphone for an hour and then all of it just magically works, right? There's um, there's a lot behind the scenes. Mm-hmm. A lot, a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot. A lot. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm just getting eye rolls from Malin right now, which is perfect. Um, so, so, uh oh, we have, we have notes. Oh, she just... Uh oh, I don't know if. Oh, uh, 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 that's not it. Oh, there nope. it is. Oh. Berg, pickleball championships, WPC World Pickleball Championships, European Finals. So we were just talking about Jan Poppy, and hey, talking about the ABP being the little engine that could. Maybe we were wrong. Maybe it's not Ken Herman. Maybe it's Jan Poppy who's just <laughs> chugging along, chugging along, chugging along, and he's gonna come for global dominance of the pro pickleball space because he's doing he's doing what um what some of these tours and leagues can only aspire to do and that's and that's go global. Jan Poppy, Mr. Worldwide. What do you think? He's always been an idea man, Rob. He has Correct. since the very beginning. WPC first man doing pool play to get through to a single elimination bracket. I mean, he's just he's an innovator and uh now he's now he's gone global. He went from having one court in his retail shop in mm-hmm. Bonita Springs, Florida, to to now roaming the globe. To, to now having thousands of his own courts around the globe. <laughs> <laughs> thousands. <laughs> thousands. Yes, no, but so, so, yeah, this European finals, and uh, I, I don't know what, is that Austria, Switzerland? One of those. One of those. It was in the Alps. It was very, looked very snowy. It looked very cold. Uh, they used the Pickleball United rollout course. Shout out, shout out to Pickleball United. Um, my Indian compatriots. 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 Oh, my God, dude. Um, <laughs> U- UV. UV. Hey, yeah. UV is not necessarily involved in Pickleball United. It's, it's my homie, Pran. Well, uh, ah. but, but, but UV is an Indian innovator and he is, he is, he's on the forefront of Indian innovation and in the pickleball space and all of that and what it entails, but Switzerland pickleball United courts, it looked, it looked awesome. And what I like about European tournaments, and I saw a little bit of this in tennis when I played, um, I'm not going to say the ATP tour, but I played like some local tournaments in Scotland when I went over to coach this kid and it's just like they they run tournaments so well. It's like it's there's a lot of recognition for people running the tournaments. It's like a whole production. Everybody sticks around for like the end of the day after the final match of the tournament's done. Uh, they do like really cool um, introductions to the players that did well. The players that did well will actually give little speeches. Like it's it's not just like an interview on court. It's uh, it's just a cool atmosphere and. They live streamed this bad boy. And so, you know what? There wasn't much live pickleball going on. So, so we flipped it on, watched a little bit of it, and saw our little homeboy that I met in the English Open. His name's Mauro Garcia. And he's a 16 year old Spanish kid, slight in stature. We might compare him to a Hayden Patrickwin at 16 years old in America, but fast as lightning has nice soft touch uh good he, he got to the singles final i believe and lost to a guy named mateus uh from poland who's a lefty that also you know plays with a carp and hits the living crap out of the ball so watch that final and singles there's uh 
Yeah, there's a lot of talent internationally that's, you know, the more exposure they get to America, the better they're going to get, and or American players, that is. And I know the Indian contingent of top players that I trained when I went over there um, a couple months ago, they're all coming over for the U.S. Open in Naples in April, which will be fun because that'll be kind of like their first taste of a, of, you know, a high-level tournament in the States, and that'll give them a good kind of uh, bearing on where they're at and what they need to improve on. So, so Jan Poppy, Jan Poppy, just you know, growing the game globally. Who else can do? Who else can say that? No one, no, no one, one, Robert. But uh, I, I think that that's that's interesting. That that's the vibe, uh, and I think it was like that in the states a bit. You know, six or seven years ago. So the, yeah. the newness of the sport in these other countries, along with probably them just doing it their way as well. Uh, like you said, with the production, maybe less of a big tournament every weekend kind of cash grab situation that we're in in the state. It's more of of the community of it. And pickleball will always have a great community in the States, but every year that goes by, it's maybe just a teeny bit less, especially at the higher levels. So yeah, uh, yeah I remember going to Hawaii for a tournament five years ago or something like that. And, you know, they just have a nice little potluck afterwards where yeah. everyone gets together, has a couple beers, uh, has some nice food, some camaraderie, and, and it's a good community. And I think that is one of the main reasons why pickleball has so much staying power it, it is that community that it uh, that it entails. And, and it's great to see that happening uh, in places, not not just uh, in North America. Yeah. And I don't think that has to be lost on the sport as the sport grows either. You know, yeah, yeah. I think maybe naturally with the competitiveness of the pro the pro landscape and, you know, people playing for people plan for money and, you know, like as a, as an actual career, I'm just trying to avoid saying real money. Cause that's, I feel like that's overused a lot. So, uh, mm. but, but playing, playing for money that that's real. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I, I think, and we, we, we talk about this a lot and it's talked about all over. It's like all the, all of these, all of these investors vying for money and pro pickleball, Seems like such a, I, I, you know, I, I'm not going to say a bad investment because I'm, you know, we're, we're both, we're both included in that and we need it to be a good investment. Uh, but obviously the, 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 you know, majority of the markets, the 99.9% .9 of people that just play amateur and have fun. And, and I mean, that's, those are the, those are where their numbers are and the volume. And I think, and I think, like that style tournament that we're talking about, like the one in Hawaii and potluck and that community aspect and the, and people coming together and like that, that is, that is like the ethos of pickleball as a whole. And like, that's what it should be and what it, what I think it can be and continue to be as long as, you know, it doesn't get sucked into this, you know, this, I don't know, just trying to monetize every aspect of it. Like, I think, I think you can, and APP has done a good job. And I think uh, pickle four, uh, the the guys that did the ballpark series and that own the U.S. Open now, I think I think organizations like that can put a big emphasis on the amateur experience and basically and maintain that, maintain what pickleball is supposed to be and should be. Also do it profitably, but create an incredible experience for the amateur. And I think that's where the real opportunity lies in pickleball. Yeah, and I and and I, I made some statement about it being at the top or the pro levels, and the, it there is going to be a, a one percent situation where it is a bit more businessy, but we don't want that trickle down to go too far. It, it's going to happen a little bit, but keep keep the community and uh, uh, you know a lot of those things that that you said right there. Uh, pretty optimistic that that will continue. Uh, maybe not at the highest, highest of levels, but, but almost all of the pickleball community can, can feel that way. Yeah. And I know, you know, we're going to start doing our alt cast where we're, where we're commentating on, on events going on that we're not at physically. So that'll be a lot of fun, but I think, I think I would, it, it would be really fun to have you get over to an international event like this maybe the english open this upcoming year the indian open if it works um oh we should talk about the indian open like do you have anything going on that weekend february 8th to 11th what february 8th to 11th oh i yeah. have no idea i don't know anything rob I mean, well 
that no could, idea. That, that could be a potentially worthwhile trip for you to go over to India and do some commentary. Yeah, no, I'm, I, I'm, I'm into it. Uh, I think that they're, I mean, it's just, we've talked about it multiple times there. It's just too great of a, a realm that you, you have to, you have to dip your toe into it. The player right. pools, the, 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 the racket sports and, and the love of those from, from a lot of these countries. I mean, we, we, what'd you talk about last time we were talking about Indian pickleball, the, the Chinese are not playing for five years and training their, their pickleball players so they can burst onto the scene. I mean, if you don't love yeah. that, it's great stuff. So they're, uh, they're training by vertical too, from only table tennis backgrounds, from only squash oh, backgrounds, from only okay. badminton oh, backgrounds. See this, I mean, this is, this is what I want. This is what I like. Uh, yeah. th this is, this is global and this is where it needs to be, Robert. And you also need to be in a Bollywood outfit dancing in the streets of Mumbai. Cause I don't, yes, there's nothing yes. else I want to see more than that. Yeah, I, I feel like I'm that guy. Like, I yeah. feel like I can go to a new culture and just immerse myself in it and just have a couple. Do they have IPAs over there, Rob? Yeah, do they? Maybe? Yeah, they absolutely Yeah. Do. Okay, that's all I need. I need a couple and if IPAs they don't, and immerse myself in culture. And they'll create a stone IPA for you. Mm -hmm. There's actually a stone IPA. I might just bring some with me, Robert. <laughs> there we go. So, uh, but yes, I want to, like, we should, I think we should both get over to a international event tournament. Uh, maybe you even come out of retirement for one of them for, mm. for old time sakes. Maybe not. Maybe not. Maybe we'll see. Uh, I'm but, playing, uh, I'm playing a bit of pickle today later this afternoon, Robert, with Colin Schick and Stefan Averne, who is in town. And oh. I'm just, ho I'm just hoping to get through it without injury. That's, that's goal number one. That's always a win. Just, mm -hmm. you know, having a nice healthy sesh of no injury. And Robert, Down big news. Hands. What? Big news, big news. Yeah. I actually am heading to Charlotte on Friday. This is Wednesday to play with old Mr. Jack Sock. Oh, so okay. I've been, I've been, I've been, wanting, to do, been yeah. wanting to do that for a couple months, and it uh, looks like we're going to be able to make it happen. So uh, okay, I believe it's going to be myself, Colin Schick, who apparently has paired up with Sock for not just one or two tournaments for a good chunk of the year, oh, which, wow. was, uh, which was uh, cool news to hear. Breaking and news. Er Eric Roddy. So, uh, oh, so they, dude. Abraham Deacon. A, that, oh, his name's Abraham Deacon. <laughs> I love it. Abraham Deacon, dude. <laughs> he's my favorite person in pickleball. Really? He's I've not, never met him. I've never not, like spent time with him before. I'm oh, excited. oh, Adam, you're in for a real tree if you get to spend time with Mr. Abraham Deacon. Okay. Because it's not so. only Abraham Deacon. Sometimes Mr. Thomas Jefferson comes out and makes an appearance stop, and not only stop. not not only thomas jefferson but sometimes even dwight b eisenpower will make an appearance too oh man those uh old presidential references got a little brow sweat working for me. That's, <laughs> that's that's good stuff all three of them i, I thought it, i mean abraham dinkin i thought it was over uh mm -hmm. you, you broke out two more uh no. and these are these are eric roddy specials these yeah. oh yes 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 yes, yes okay yes. all right he's um you know Fins up for Mr. Eric Roddy. Yeah, he's a well, big he's a big Miami Dolphins fan. Well, well, screw Jack Sock. Maybe I just want to be hanging out with Eric Roddy and have a new oh, best friend right there. You know, I, I assure you, Abraham Dinkin is is the highlight of that trip. <laughs> Maybe, hopefully, you. yeah, that's right, that's right. I think I think Sock and shit can have some success as long as they don't run up run up against the buzz saw of Dobran and Roddy because Sock not a not a big fan of playing those two. That's for sure. No, no. Mm -mm. Got his number. Mm -mm. So, okay. I'll let you lead us into the next segment because I have no idea where we go from here, Mr. Adam. Oh, well, let's let's bring out – so we talked about the what, – what do you call it? Altcast? Altcast. Alt yeah, Altcast. So we, we need a you... name. Let's throw a name out to the – out to, out to the pickle sphere. Come up with a come up with an alt cast name for us. Yeah. So that is a remote commentary of a live event, and I am have not done that before, but I think it would be great, Robert. Uh, I believe we got we got some nice feedback of our little four hour stint at the Beer City Open, so I, it feels feels like we need to run it back. Yeah, but I'm gonna just be completely honest with you, Adam. I'm not gonna. I'm probably not going to do commentary like people want me to do commentary. Mm. Like I'm probably going to talk over points mm. just because I have stuff to say. Um, and I think in all casts, like if you want to, if you want to watch and listen to the existing commentators that are in pro pickleball, watch the mainstream. You got it. Everything you want right there. If you want an alternative <laughs> alt cast, listen to us. 
we might say some fun stuff. I would imagine so. Yeah. And so yeah. I don't think it, I don't think we need to do it in in the way that you're supposed to do it, like in terms of commentary. I think we can we can it's our it's our rules, Adam. That's right. You get we, like just, you need, said. we just need organizations to allow us to do it, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> that I, that I, might I, be a challenge. I, I don't know how this all works, but it seems like we have to get something yep. signed yep. off on to make this happen, I, I would imagine. Even if we have what what would happen if we had more viewers in the actual regular uh, situation, Rob? I don't know. That this and might, I, I happen, think, so. I, and I, but I think, I think that might be the issue. Is that I think we probably would. Mm. Mm. Uh, I see. Because I see. when you combine elite level, high end content talent, Adam, stuff like that mm -hmm. tends to happen. So, I you know don't want to so, bootleg it. I've bootlegged it before. Mm -hmm. I did it. Yeah. I actually, I did an alt cast solo. Um, a guy that used to manage the freestyle podcast my homie tony was able to rig up something it was <laughs> it was not above board but i did it in hawaii when i was in hawaii and just commentated for like a day and people liked it dude so i think i think i think we're going to kill it as long as we can get permission to figure as out how to do it. Do it. <laughs> yeah, as long as we can do it legally yeah. yeah legally legally oh also robert we were uh, pondering a bit of an idea a couple weeks ago and uh a little IFR, it feels right retreat, possibly. So uh, not possibly. a mix, uh, uh, but not possibly. Yes, it's going exactly. to happen. It's now, happening. when exactly that happens could be up for debate a bit, yeah. but it would yeah. be some uh, social interactions uh, yeah. with uh, you and myself, uh, a little bit of play with the pro and former pro, pro, former pro being me, and uh, a bit of uh, instruction as well, all kind of wrapped into a fun-filled weekend at a very nice uh, Airbnb location with some quality pickleball courts as well. Uh, I think it's a great idea and would love to hear uh, any feedback uh, from some of our consistent viewers, if that is something they would be interested in. Oh, that's well said. And I think, yeah, I think what, what, what will be different about it from other stuff that you see out there, call it a all inclusive resort, yada, yada, is this will meet, this will be a more intimate, experience mm -hmm. i don't know why i said intimate like that it'll be it'll be a more intimate i experience. know i know why Robert. stop it no i didn't I, no it won't be intimate like that it'll just be a, a small tight-knit group of just people that love pickleball that want to get better that want to hang out um like you said we'll do it at a probably a extremely large airbnb that has many bedrooms and many bathrooms and pickleball courts and I think it'll be super fun. We'll we'll do uh we'll obviously record a podcast there, live podcast in the living room or something. We'll do it will no, we'll just hang out and talk pickleball for four days until your heart's tired of pickleball, which probably won't be. Mm, yeah, maybe never. Uh, but it'll be super fun. It's like adult camp. Who, who, adult who camp. Doesn't, who doesn't want to go to adult camp? And it, it'll be it will I be do. smaller though. It'll be like probably I would imagine capped out at like 12 to 16 people yeah and then um yeah looking at like probably a four night situation three or four night situation with a lot of pickle mm -hmm. and a lot of hanging out and somewhere warm but not too warm there you go yeah i'm, I'm excited you sold me i'm in i'm in too who else is in yeah so leave us some feedback if uh if that's something that sounds interesting and we will we'll start working on dates Love that. Love that too. Okay. Uh, on Robert, to the next. Robert, yes. I want I wanted to mention something. Yes. I just thought this was funny. Uh, I was just scrolling through a bit of uh teams for the PPA Masters, which I believe is the next big tournament. And old Jeannie Bouchard with a nice 2.0 rating. Love that. Oh, 2 0. I didn't 2 0. Uh, I didn't know it went that low. I didn't either, but do you think do you think I would imagine she's coming out of the gate probably as like a 4 0? So I'll say that's a little low for her, but yeah, I'll say, I, maybe um, that's the default when you don't have a rating that that's what they give you 2 points. Yeah, <laughs> but I would say no. I don't know if anybody's heard of her actually holding a pickleball paddle or playing yet. Uh, maybe she, maybe she has. Um, I would, I think if she had been playing with any high level players, we probably would have heard about it, but. Good luck, Tyler Loon. I mean, it's a, it's a win. It's a, it's, you know, it's a loss, but a win for him. 
Yeah, no, I agree with that. I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna give her four point eight two. Oh, that's super generous. Four, yeah, four point eight two. I'm gonna stick with that. I mean, yeah, she's got to be okay, right? Right. Hmm. But but that's that's the biggest thing that you said, Rob, is that we would have heard about it just through the grapevine if she was playing with quality players and kind of holding up in that situation. So I'm yeah. probably just going to guess that she's played two to four times of pickleball. And until I hear otherwise, that's what I'm sticking with. Yeah. Who, Adam, speaking of uh, kind of new players emerging and new partnerships, all that kind of stuff. Uh, well, first off, just talking about the PPA high and I masters tournament, the all white event. How'd you say it? Hi- Hyundai. 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 Okay. Right. Hyundai. Fair I don't enough. know. If, uh, I mean, yeah, not sure if that's actually how you say it. Okay. But there's a lot of teams signed up. And mm-hmm. I, I took the liberty of, because I've been getting hit up by the PPA asking who my partners are for it. And I'm like, well, I didn't sign up for it. So nobody. And, <laughs> and not only that, but. I have an exclusive MLP contract currently that goes into effect January 1st that prohibits me from playing any other events. So how would I contractually be able to even sign up for this event and participate in it, Adam? You tell me, Robert. I'm not a lawyer. (laughs) (laughs) But I think there's a lot of players and teams that have signed up that when I've asked them, they're like, no, I didn't sign up. Oh, really? But so they just but, got put but they're, on. But they're, uh. but they're listed, uh, mm. which I find to be curious. So, one, it'll be it'll be interesting to see, you know, who's actually playing it based on or, you know, versus like who's actually signed up for it right now. Because I've heard some mixed things on people that are participating. Mm. And I think a lot of it's obviously depending on what happens with this merger. Which, um, you know, they've extended the deadline to what January thirty first now, which seems like a odd time to do it, considering there's events prior to that. Which the contract goes into effect January first, which so these existing contracts will be valid for a month, and then with with the potential that we're violating the contracts. So I, I don't know. It's all it's all hairy. It's all weird. It's all moving too slow. And it's what December. Well, we're recording this on December 20th and the new year starts obviously, in a, you know, less than two weeks. And I have no idea what my schedule is next year and what I have to play, what I don't have to play. But in terms of who is signed up for the PPA masters and the new players that are playing on the PPA tour, we've got the, you know, not Sam Query's not new, but we have him. We have, Donald Jung, we have Jack Sock, uh, Jeannie Bouchard. Who are you just, you know, just in terms of pickleball viewership, like what gets the most views are are these kind of former tennis players that like the pickleball slam with McEnroe and Chang, like that had good numbers. Mm-hmm. I mean, obviously they're legends of tennis and, you know, Jack Sock's the highest profile tennis player coming over. Donald Jung had a had a great you know maybe didn't live up to expectations for his pro tennis career but still had a still was very good was a very good pro tennis player uh i think that's going to draw a lot of viewership out of the gate is just like how how do these guys stack up same with what we saw at the bubbly in vegas people just want to see like you know it's always been the biggest question is can these guys just come over and dominate and i think that that's been answered pretty resoundingly no mm-hmm. at this point but who are you most excited to kind of keep tabs on in 2024 of the crossovers well for, first off that entire wonderful spiel that you just gave for five minutes <laughs> took me the entirety of it to find the tournament on pickleballbrackets.com rob so for, <laughs> you're welcome so I, I was, I, time. I, I, I was thank you time. thank yeah. you as i'm frivolously over here on my ipad trying to find some of the the teams only only took me seven minutes to do so uh yeah no i i think that's a great question and we we touched on it episode or two ago it's like it's a win-win situation like some uber talented athletic tennis player comes over and beats people right out of the gate that's fun they shit the bed and fall on their face that's fun too <laughs> so and we had both from jack sock which yeah is we great, had both. Which we had we have, 
it was first round loss and it was winning the damn tournament and mixed uh and Ali, whoever whoever your partner is you still got to get it done so to see that full range from jack sock in that tournament was great and uh yeah in terms of some of the players i think it's the ones that are kind of going for it and playing a little more seriously like a, a donald young or something we, we don't know anything about Jeannie bouchard so I, i'm guessing she's not maybe full force going into it but i think we've had statements from donald and, and players of that caliber that he's gonna make a crack at it for the year and kind of see how it goes so the ones that have that that racket sport high-end sporting background and they are kind of committed or at least semi-committed to to putting in some effort into the sport those are the main main ones uh that, that i'm looking for and uh yeah i i think it's great i'm gonna get a little taste of it in two days with with jack to, to actually i mean i've watched him play i, I hear the buzz I, I hear other players talk about him but to get on court with him, I, I will have a much better understanding of, of his level uh, as I think that there's really no replacement for being on court with, with someone. Yeah, absolutely. And I did see that he's, or somebody, I heard that he signed up for singles, which will be also fun again, because he did play singles in Charlotte and had some battles. I think he went down to old Jake Kuzmider. Oh yeah, uh, God! Little that, little bit of athleticism on that court. <laughs> yeah, but that was a fun match to watch, and I think it'll be interesting to see um, uh, if he continues to play singles. Because again, like talent, like you know, just finished a long tennis career, a lot of court time, a lot of you know, those legs have been churning for a long time, and um, as we know, like people. You know, look at the J Dubs. It's like, yeah, it's just not like once you once you hit a level in doubles, it's like it's not always worth it to keep playing singles. Yeah, and and, and maybe even f for me, I mean, he is he, he doesn't love his backhand. He's yeah. his his first step is incredibly explosive. He's yeah. obviously a phenomenal mover. So for me, you obviously have to factor in some of injury stuff, hips and knees, with his high end tennis background. But for me. I think you got to be careful. I understand this is pickle, smaller court, but you're playing all three events and you're doing at least decent in all of them. Your fitness better be there too. Uh, I, I don't care what his background is. I know he's got a young kid. If you know he's not on point uh, from a cardio fitness perspective, he he could possibly struggle if he's making deep runs in all three events. Yeah, I mean with 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 mixed, I think he will be going deep and mix is the second most physical event. So it'll be interesting to see that, especially with men's being on the last day, how much, you know, how much toll it's taken on them and, and how, how men's goes. Yeah. So, and Rob, you're, you're a perfect example as well. We both play singles very similarly. Yeah. Playing singles with a poor backhand is very difficult to do. And you, it is very physically taxing. You know, yeah. you don't just have that, whatever Federico two hander where you're almost even on both sides or something, you know, yeah. Uh, uh, much more difficult. So uh, yeah, that's something to keep in mind and monitor. Yeah. Yeah. I think, I think it'll be fun. I don't know. Oh, do, you, do you have the tournament pulled up? I do. I think uh, it'll be fun to see if Donald Young's playing singles. Cause he, um, I could see him being very, very good at not just, you know, having great passing shots and cause he has a good forehand and a backhand. It would be, but he, I could see him having nice touch finesse, being very, very quick on court, playing solid cat and mouse. I could see him being a very, very good singles player. Yeah. E effortless movement. You know, yeah. it's like, it's like those two, both of them. It, it's just like first step. It's just, you're just there. You know, there's no like building up your speed or taking a couple steps to get there. When you watch, when I watch Donald and Jack Sock play, when they, when they needed to move, man, it is just so, so smooth. Yeah. I think okay, let me, we got to get pulling we, up singles here. We should get Donald on the podcast. Come on, Donald. Come on, dude. Why? Why is this so difficult? Why? Like, I, 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 I mean, I'm a pickleball junkie. I'm scrolling through this crap all the time, Robert. I can't find anything. Oh, <laughs> how, how is it so difficult? I don't understand. I have software. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. I got it pulled up finally here. And is Jeannie Bouchard playing singles? That's also another question I have. Check in there. I don't see. I don't see any of them. Uh, for for men's. Oh, sock is in. Sock is in. I do see it. You mentioned that, but Luke Wasson. Who's Luke Wasson? Mm -hmm. He's in main draw right off the bat. So 
Yeah, that's it. I don't know. Men's uh, don't see Donald on there. Uh, only name that's that query any of that. Just, just, uh, just sock. And who are who are Donald's partners? It's another great question. Give me uh, eleven. More <laughs> Give me eleven more minutes, and I'll tell you, Rob. <laughs> so for men's doubles, there, I mean, there's some pretty interesting teams here. Uh, I, I I like it. It's it's a little little different. Couple couple different looks. Uh, just. You know, a handful of you got Navratil and Rhett and Meyer. I don't know if we've ever seen that before. That'll be fun. I know Andre's playing with uh, Tardio. Tardio. I mean, lots of length, lots of yeah. lot, lots of tools to work with with those two. Uh, yeah, if Tardio can stay locked in mentally, I see I see him go through some dips. That's uh, the question. But, yeah. Yeah, but when he's when he's playing well, dude is a dude's a monster. And he's and he's a monster on both sides. Yeah, I I, I don't see uh, I don't see Donald Young in men's doubles. Oh, maybe he's not playing. Hmm. Or it could be qualifying. Uh, let's try that. Uh, no way they're putting him in qualies. <laughs> <laughs> Dep- depends what he signed, I guess. Yeah, that's right. Okay, I'm going to do – yeah, not not in there. Not in there. Okay. So uh, well, That's a bummer. So yeah. yeah, it is too bad. It's okay. It's okay. It uh, is okay. G- is Jeannie playing, Jeannie playing women's? Uh, it's the, the iPad's done. I can't do oh, it anymore. Okay. It's, I, I can't. I can't talk and think about what to yeah, say. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a heavy load. Pickleball brackets. You know, my life's it's, tough, Rob. It always has a, been. So. Yeah, we'll we'll keep it simple. We'll keep mm-hmm. it simple. Mm-hmm. Um, one thing we should talk about, Adam, is it's it's it feels like it's an important part. We should start talking about a little bit more is how to get better at pickleball. Oh yeah, yeah. What do you think? And I think so. Big shout out to my buddy Michael O'Neill who has a great podcast, which is focused on just this. Um, he, I actually know him from pre pickleball days when I was doing my other podcast called fail on. He had, a, he has a, I don't know if he still does it, but he has a podcast called um, it's, it's all based on solopreneur, basically entrepreneur, one man business type stuff. And he would do a podcast focused on that. But he has a podcast now on Pickleball called 4, 4.0 to Pro, and he does it with Scott Flegelman out of Boulder. Oh, I know Flegelman. Senior pro. Yeah, Flegelman's a great guy. And this is what their podcast is focused on is, is how to go from 4.0 to Pro. So it's, it's, and it's doing great. It's content that people love. And I think we have a unique perspective, Adam, in terms of helping people do that. Yeah, I mean, there's, there's probably only – 500 true pro pickleball junkies there's about 5 million people that that want to go from 3-5 or 4-0 and improve their game so it, it is a, a broader audience uh going from pro pickleball to, to talking about those skills and traits that that allow you to take that that leap forward and that's that's one of the great things about it it doesn't matter you don't have to be a pro there's always a group or a uh, uh, challenge court at your local area that you want to get to, whether you're 2.0 Jeannie Bouchard or you're a 4.0 uh, player that plays five times a week. There, there's always a, a level to improve and to get up to, and that makes it challenging and great for for so many varieties of levels of play. So, I think so. I want you to go into like a specific like to do for people this week that they can actually work on. But I want to hear your thoughts on kind of, so like when I was, when I kind of made that goal of going from beginner to pro, I, I have a friend named Craig Clemens who's in LA. He runs a company called golden hippo media, and he is known as probably one of the best uh, direct response copywriters in the world. So he's, which for those of you that don't know, that just means he is able to write sales and marketing material that makes people pull out their credit cards and mm-hmm. buy on the spot based on persuasive copy. And, and so he's, he's incredibly talented and he, I did an interview with him on a, on a previous podcast and he basically has this four step process to becoming world-class at anything. And I've always thought about this when I'm, when, when anytime I'm learning a new skill or wanting to get good at anything, and it's kind of what I followed in Pickleball, and I even wrote about it in one of my first blogs at Pickleball Portal, who you know who carried my blog as I was just getting started. And so the four steps are, number one is immersion. Mm. So 
no, actually it's application. So application <laughs> means you have to, you have to do and practice what you're wanting to get good at. You have to do it a lot. You have to do it at least five days a week and really put in the time of doing the skill, whatever it may be. The second is immersion. Like you have to, you know, for us, Adam, I think, you know, we all, everybody goes through this when they're first starting out a pickleball, you start dreaming of it, right? Like you dream of like, of certain scenarios and, and you watch YouTube videos and you just consume as much information as you can. You listen to podcasts, you watch instructional videos on how to improve. So that's immersion is really just going all in the third steps mentorship. So for me in that respect was when I kind of tapped out of as good as I could get when I was started in Austin, when I was playing with you and you would come through occasionally, I was like, well, I've got to, I've got to be around better players because I'm the best one here now that's playing regu regularly. So that's when I went to Florida and practiced with, you know, Deckel and Vivian and Simone and got into, got into those groups. And that's kind of like how I looked at as mentorship. Like I remember reaching out to Deckel really early on. He didn't know who I was and I just, and he was very kind and responded and, and I literally was like, okay, well I'm going to come practice. And he's like, okay. So like just the mentorship aspects really important in terms of finding people that have accomplished what you want to accomplish and, and being around them and, and not just taking from them. Right. Like I was, I was, I wasn't, I was the worst player on the court, but I was good enough to where they still got good practice. And I, and I realized that. And so you're still adding value to the group. Uh, the last one that none of us can really, you can't really cheat is time. It just takes time. Like you're going to have to put in the reps. You can't really cheat time. You can accelerate it by putting in more reps quicker, but it's still going to take time. So that's kind of the four step process from Craig Clemens. That I always think about really with anything. And I think you can, you can apply that across any, any skill. Yeah, no, d uh, definitely. Uh, but I was curious on, cause you know, for somebody that's gotten into high level stuff outside of pickleball, you as well, like, like poker, do you see similarities with that in terms of that process? Oh, absolutely. So, yeah. uh, yeah, I think, I think sure. Maybe those just exact specific things might be slightly more tailored to, to different activities, but there is overlap with all of those, uh, yeah. th those four and whatever you want to really go for. So, uh, for, for me, so just from kind of a theory perspective, for me, the, some of the associations, associations I make with poker and pickleball are like long-term math and long-term strategy and self-awareness of knowing when you're doing something well and it's not working or you're you're doing something poorly and it is working. I, I think that there is a ton of noise in pickleball, point to point, game to game, uh, stat stuff. All, all of that is very noisy and, and you need to know the difference between everything when you're in the moment. And it's tough when you're in the moment. I remember when you came to that Austin group, you could just, at, at some point, you could just blow everyone off the court. And I remember we had a light back and forth on uh, Messenger or whatever. And I was like, well, why don't you just attack the player with good hands the player who can't dink, don't dink to them. The player with good hands, attack them. The player with a great soft game, don't just frivolously speed up. Beat them at what they do well. Yeah. And that is like one of the best ways to, to get that quality practice and that quality court time. So it, it's, yeah, it's just easy to, to shake and bake, have super short points, uh, yeah. overwhelm someone who has a poor skill set in a certain way. Practice with a purpose and, and make sure you are knowing your opponents, your practice groups, and maximizing what you get out of it. And the only way you can do this, and I think this is where people struggle with doing exactly what you just said, is their will to win. You have yes. to, you have yes. to be okay losing in practice. Yes. It doesn't matter. Like, but that's. I like, love to lose in practice. It's yeah. my favorite. It's my favorite. Yeah. And I remember, like, when you when you would come play with our groups, like you would lose often in practice, and I was like, Jesus, this guy's not that good. But you're working on certain <laughs> things, you know what I mean? You're working, and you would even announce it before the game. You're like, oh, I'm just going to work on leaving every ball this game that I think is going to go out. And you would just really take like these little micro things in each game that you'd play and just purely focus on those, those, those games. Yeah. And I was like, I was a pretty aggressive competitor in my early years, in my teen years, and even in my twenties as well. And I think that 
poker really helped me with that because you you lose it doesn't yeah. matter how good you are you you freaking lose in poker and you lose a lot so yeah. getting myself to a mental space where i was okay that okay with that and had the ability to do what we were just talking about i think it was such a leap for me not only professionally in games and sports but also in life as well and i don't think if i went through that that decade of poker I would have been able to detach myself from maybe losing uh, in those early years of pickleball yeah. like I was able to do. So yeah. I think that that you're exactly right. It's a huge factor. I can see the glimmer in some of these, you know, 4-0 and 4-5's eyes when they, they're working on something, they're playing the right way, and then they just get that, that little oomph of competitive drive, and, and it kind of – kind of just it does, it's it's not bad it's just that it, it, you have to find a way to manage it and have that inside but also stay locked in mentally and, and know what's going on as well there's nothing i respect more than going into like a group of three players that are like that are like four or five and they play every ball to me mm -hmm. you know like that's it's it's a uh, and that sounds so simple but like i would say so I hop in, I hop in those groups pretty often. Um, and I would say it happens 10% of the time where that actually happens. Yeah. People like people's drive to win and just win the point versus actually try to get better. Just it, it, it overtakes them. Like they just yeah. want to win. And it's yeah. like, the, but getting a win in this particular game means jack shit. Like you have an opportunity to like hit balls with a pro. Why would you not? Yeah, it's like I've been I've been on the court so many times where it's someone is the weak link and my partner or whatever, what or I, my partner's the weak link, whatever it may be, they see that chink in the armor and they go at that player more instead yeah. of going to the better player and getting better, more reps, better practice, more realistic point construction. So yeah. uh it's kind of like that little paradigm shift to go from that full on competitive spirit and barrage to know what is actually going to be the most efficient way for you to improve your game. And it's just tough. It's tough. It really is. And I mean, I feel like I, like I said, I feel like I had literally a decade of practice doing it and, and it's still not always the easiest. So for someone who doesn't have that practice of separating those two, I, I can see where it's a real struggle. And it depends like what your goals are too. Like if it's, if it's to truly like get better at pickleball and improve your craft, then do that. If you're, if your objective is to literally go have fun and beat your friends and shit talk, like, yeah, play, play to whoever you want, try to win the game. It just, it, and yeah, it's dependent on the person too. But I would say like, you know, if a better player joins your group, it's probably, you know, for, for their sake. So they don't want to ever like, let's say would be willing to do it again and not just be like, why am I wasting my time out here? Play to them. Yeah. And it doesn't, you know, it doesn't have to be 95%, yeah. but it's always above 50 when, yeah, when, right. when struggling the better player, obviously it's always above 50 to that better player. And that's a good point, Rob. I, a lot of the times when I have given private lessons to not like a regular, just someone that might be a one-time thing, or, or I'm only going to do a couple lessons. I ask them like, what are your goals? Like, what, what like, what, 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 what do you want to get out of this? Uh, is it, to beat Larry the Lobber that's in your group, or is it to just kind of be more internal and just get your game to the highest level that you want it to? So a, a lot of these implementation of, of new techniques can have you have that level dip before you come back up and it actually makes you better. Totally. Some people aren't willing to go through that. They just want to have fun and they want to do it. And that's great. But if you are one of those players uh, that, that, that wants to, to, to get to the, best level you can you're, you're gonna have to have a different mindset than, than those just full-on fun rec players yeah and it's and you're gonna lose and it's not gonna feel good and you're gonna feel like you didn't improve that day but it's uh you know it's not a linear curve straight up right it's like there's dips and valleys and peaks and um but what i always think about is if i'm if i'm losing a game and i played a fair amount of the balls like that's a, it's your learning. Like you can get, get, get as upset as you want about losing. But like, if you actually, you know, dissect what just happened, you're going to get better. Even if you don't dissect it, I think just by losing, you're going to, you're going to subconsciously know like what, what hurt you and you're going to work on those things. And yeah. So yeah. And when it's just, just think of it this way, when you have 
the right mindset, your court time is literally two, three, four, five X more valuable than if you aren't going into it with the right mental mindset. So, yeah. I mean, you, you could honestly take three, four, five times longer to get improve a certain level when you were not really thinking about it and just going through the motions where someone else is practicing with a purpose and in the right mindset, they are exponentially getting better quicker than you because of that mental factor. Oh, it's so true. Um, yeah. And I mean, we can, we can transition from subjects, but like, yeah, like, like you said, a practice with a purpose, like those, like it's easy to go out and just hit balls. Right. But like, to like, if you're actually trying to get better, um, like treating, treating, treating practice, like, uh, like it's a match with that level of focus and intensity. No, I, I like squeezing these segments in, uh, you know, maybe th this was just kind of whatever theory mindset type yeah. thing, but to, yeah. to, to have a couple, uh, specific physical things as well that we can talk on, uh, talk about then some, pre uh, uh, subsequent episodes I think is really good. Uh, and, and will really help those, th those players looking to improve. Yeah, and honestly, whatever you guys want to hear from us in respect to getting better, let us know, and we're we're happy to dive into this because I actually like talking about this stuff. It helps me too. Yeah, I, I agree. I I I don't mind. Uh, I I don't mind teaching. I hated yeah. teaching tennis, but I don't mind teaching pickleball. I've never really, uh, I haven't done it a, a crazy amount, but a pretty good amount, and I haven't had my you know my will to do it wane in any way. So I I, I enjoy seeing people get better. I enjoy kind of watching players who want it and then seeing results that's all fun that's that's all a progression yeah. and, and as a coach uh coach or teacher that's 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 a great aspect of it and and, and i agree completely i just want to give a shout out based on you just triggered me on on thinking about my uh my season two teammate with the st louis shock martin emrich in terms of teaching um uh, mm -hmm. so this dude i would say outside of tyson the guy that I know that has the second best work ethic in pickleball is Martin Emrich. And not just in terms of like training for himself, but like this dude is so regimented. Like he, I, I believe he's up at maybe before 5 a.m. every day. He has turkey chili every single day for lunch, um, like meal preps it. He's, he, most days he's teaching, and this might have slowed down a little bit recently, but he's often teaching from like 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. without a break on court teaching standing up eating like meals while he's picking up balls like it's it's insane stuff and then uh i talked to him about like what his perfect kind of day looks like moving forward into next year and he's like you know ideally i'd be teaching like you know five hours a day and then like i have four hours a day of training pickleball i'm like nine hours a day on court's your dream day you're a psychopath it, like, psychopath it, but some people are just built like that man it's uh, like that I could, I could never do that. I would lose my mind, but some people just thrive in that. And not only that, but he does three cold plunges a day, three, three, and that's, and, that's... He, and he showers prior to each one. And after each one guy takes oh, wow. six showers a day. That's, I mean, that's professional stuff. And, and I had a very light conversation with Travis Rettenmeyer who, I actually like quite a bit. I think he gets a dick rap, but I, I really like the time, the little bit of time that I've been able to spend with him. And he said the exact same thing about Emmerich. He was like, that dude will be just fine. His work ethic and tennis was ridiculous. I mean, he, he wasn't knocking him at all. He was just, he had a teeny bit less talent than a handful of other players, but just the will, determination, mental focus and work ethic on court uh, got him to, to a very high level and, and got him uh, to be better or a higher ranking than, than maybe someone that had a bit more full on God given talent. So yeah. that, that's great to see. And, and, and the professionalism is only going to increase uh, Travis, uh, you know, knocked plenty of players saying, no, no one knows how to be a professional. A lot of these, you know, pickleball only athletes or, or never got to a high level of, of pro tennis. They just don't quite know what it takes. And that's going to continue to change as more and more players come in and, and more and more uh, rewards uh, of being that high end player are, are out there. Yeah. Shout out to Martin for being a professional. 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 He's got, uh, he's got, uh, he's got, he's dominant hands, the right one. 
lefty guy looks great physically. I, I mean, I don't have a problem with him. He just has to avoid that Todd Fote role and he'll be just fine. <laughs> he nightmares. Uh, uh, it's okay. That was tough. That was tough. Um, okay. Anything else? This is a solid 49 minutes, Adam. What do you think? No, I I'm, I'm, I'm into that. You know, it's gotta be real good to get over an hour. I start losing my train of thought and whatnot. So do we, staring do, we, at the- do we, do we jump into any of the MLP stuff? I know we had some, uh, we had some comments that we could mention. Let's just do it next week. Let's just do it. I'm sure it'll all be obsolete by then anyway so we'll get some we'll get some fresh info from our sources and we will we will touch on it again uh uh, next week when we get together along with uh you know maybe another couple tips for those amateur players looking to improve this segment has to be called just the tip just for a second just the tip just for a second just to see how it feels robert just to see how it feels No. bye because you know why Why? Because it feels right. It feels right. Legendary.